Hello folks. And I want to thank you guys for all the great comments you gave me when I was asking that question, should I go into Galaxy Season with an OSC camera or a mono? And I want to let you guys know I decided on using mono. I know I'm going to disappoint a lot of you because you wanted to see me use this QHY10 camera. But, you know, in the end, I think trying to pick up that details one out. So, I'm um, sorry to the, the one-shot color folks. But today, I want to talk to you about, uh, just to let you know, I'm going to uh, trade in a couple of my cameras. And the first camera I want to trade in is the ASI 183 mono camera because it's non-cooled. And I bought it thinking I was only going to use it for lunar or in the sun, but I should have known eventually I was going to want to do deep sky with it. And for Deep Sky, I really do need a cooled camera. You know, I, I, I think it'll, when it's cooled, it's, it's going to help you out a lot with noise. And uh, I'm going to trade it in with OPT. Uh, I like dealing with those guys because I know them and they're patient with me. Um, even when I flip-flop between uh, Rasa and Hyperstar, they, they put up with me. So I thank you guys for that. And the price they're offering me for my old camera, I thought, is fair. Maybe I could do better on eBay, but I don't like dealing with eBay and people I don't know. I'd rather deal with people I do know. So and I think the price they're going to give me at OPT is fair, and I'm going to put that money towards the ASI 183 mono cooled camera. So um, I don't want to say how much they're going to give me because maybe it's different from person to person, and I don't want to put anyone on the spot. You know, I don't want anyone saying, well, you gave Chuck this much, how come not? Nah, <laughs> leave me out of it. I'm not getting into that. So, that's that one. And I still want, um, oh, by the way, the reason I want another cooled camera, I already have the ASI 1600mm. So you're thinking, well, why do I need another mono camera? The reason is because I'm still planning to go to a, an F2 scope. And I thought the ASI 183mm cool would be a, a good fit for an F2 scope. So that that's my plan for that. And I still want a one-shot color camera. Because my thinking is, if I go to um, an F2 scope, I don't want to tear down my current rig. That, that big refractor has been too good to me. So if I, if I do this F2 thing, I'm going to have two setups running at once. I know I'm asking for trouble with that, but that's my plan. And so I thought maybe I can have mono going on one camera or one telescope, OSC going on another telescope. But I don't want that OSC to be QHY10 because I don't think the, the resolution and the pixel size are, are what I want. I'd rather go with maybe an ASI 183 um, mm color, not mm, but MC. That's MC is the color, mm is mono, or the ASI 1600 MC. And that's, <clears throat> that's what I'm thinking. The thing is, um, I haven't talked to OPT about this one, and I'm, I've heard QHY is lowering their prices across the board. I, I don't like the sound of that, but I'm hoping OPT will let me sell this one back. Um, if not, I'll, I'll maybe I'll have to look somewhere else. But um, OPT, if you're watching, please give me a good deal on this thing. Please, I barely ever used it. And um, that's all I got to say for that. I just want to let you guys know. And I've got some other stuff I'm working on. So uh, let me show you what else I'm doing. So, okay, thanks. Okay, I wanted to show you some of the stuff I've been working on the last couple of days. And today, during the day, I was out there trying the sun again. And I wanted to show you um, what my data looks like without the flats. Now, I made a video on how to do solar flats a, a video or two ago. And in that video, I showed you how to, the flats will fix the screen door effect. It'll fix illumination issues. It'll fix Newton's rings. But I didn't show you how it would fix the dust specs because I didn't seem to have dust specs last time. But uh, you can see I've got a lot of... Uh, uh, yeah, see, I, I put on my bigger telescope, by the way, and in the process, somehow I introduced 
dust specks. I, everything was so clean last time when I cleaned it out. I, so that, this surprised me, but it didn't matter because my flats did the trick. And if you saw how to do it in my last video, I used uh, that technique where I blur out the sun and create my flats that way. Now, I did try the other day well, I'm using the, the deep sky flats method where you keep the, the camera in focus and you put a t-shirt over it. That's, I mean, that's the way I do it. And I created my flats that way for solar and they were not as effective. They did not fix Newton's rings. Newton's rings were clearly visible in my stacked image. So that was kind of a surprise because I did see with that, that method that the flat master did have the Newton's rings in them, so I, I was wondering how come it still didn't correct it. But you know what? From now on, I'm absolutely going to go with the method in that video uh, about uh, blurring out the sun. That that did seem more effective. And thank you to um, ZWO because they did put me on their homepage on their latest uh, blog post here. Um, Create flats for solar imaging with the ZWO ASI 183mm. It's always nice when the, the camera manufacturer finds your, your video useful enough to post for others. So that, that was kind of cool. Oh, and uh, so let me show you. Um, this is uh, what my um, uh, stacked image looks like. And this is what my <laughs> processed image looks like. And I put this on um, Astro Bin. Oh, let's take a look at Astrobin to see if I got any more likes. I noticed that uh, my um, solar and lunar stuff doesn't really get a lot of likes, <laughs> but that's okay. You know, I people have even my um, videos for the sun don't get a, a lot of views. I notice people are definitely far more interested in deep sky, but that's okay. I have 52 likes in 10 hours. Ah, <laughs> that's all right. Normally, I would probably have maybe 70 or 80 if it were deep sky, but that, that's all right. That's all right. I know what people are interested in. And uh, let's see here. Um, so that's that. And so, like I mentioned earlier, I am going with mono for galaxy season. And I wanted to show you so far, this is one of my all-time favorite galaxies. I just think it, the way it looks is so cool. And um, I'm using Gain 75 with my ASI 1600 camera, and this is a 30 second exposure. This is only 75 minutes worth of data. Um, I've already stacked it and did a little processing on it. So um, this is going to be cool. And the thing is, I have 2.8 hours of CLS data. This is LPRO data, but I have 2.8 hours of CLS data from last season. I never got a chance to finish it, so I'm going to combine after I run uh, the calibration of this and my uh, the calibrated data for my um, CLS data, I'm then going to integrate them as though they're just a single filter and then see how that looks. And then I'll move on to RGB. So that was the sombrero. And another thing with this is that I captured it when the moon was close to 80% illuminated. <laughs> so I, I think that, um, if you have a bright target and you're kind of away from the moon, 80% is my, my limit. Beyond 80%, and that's the breaking point. The data is just going to look bad. That's what I've noticed. And uh, I also captured around 75 minutes of um, the Whirlpool Galaxy on that night. Um, this is just a quick process, so I, it's... It's not um, illuminated very, very good right now, but I'll work on that when I really do the final processing. I just wanted to see what this is going to look like, and uh, so far, it's off to a good start. And of course, with the, the Whirlpool Galaxy, you want to make sure you're going to get this glow. I don't have much of it yet, probably because the moon was too bright, but you want to make sure you got that glow going around the galaxies. Um, uh, this one especially, there's no one for it. And I did another starless image with Starnet. I made a video for that as well. And it's just such an easy tool to use. I couldn't resist. And I tried it on my Omega Nebula. And uh, uh, what, what, do you, what do you think of that? Um, uh, I thought it looked super cool. Um, anyway, that, that's that. I, I, I can't help myself. I love to run playing with starless now. Uh, and especially since I, I haven't been that productive going out there to, lately. 
uh, doing more deep sky imaging. And let me, um, I want to give one more person a shout out. Um, you guys always hear about my local guru here, Jason, and of course he's got another image of the day. So I want to give him a shout out for his cat side nebula. Let me let me show you what he did there, if I can find it. Um, hang on. So check this out. Jason is on social media. The guy's been holding out on me because I thought he was anti-social media. No, no Instagram, no Facebook, but now he's on, uh, <laughs> he's on Instagram and he's already got 803 followers. That's impressive. It makes me want to start an Instagram account. <laughs> One of these days, at least. I got my hands full as it is, though. But here is his latest um, the Cat's Eye Nebula. This was actually an image of the day on Astro Bin. So <laughs> that is impressive. So uh, congrats to Jason on that one. And that's so good it's almost scary. <laughs> but you know what? I would expect nothing less from Jason. In fact, by the way, him and Doug are both out imaging right now. Um, I am so tired. Uh, it, it, it didn't look like it it got clear until around midnight, and I am so tired today. Um, I just didn't feel like going out there at midnight, rolling my stuff out, and and doing uh, the pole master. At least Doug's got a roll off roof. It's easy enough for him. Let me take a peek out the window. Let's see. You know what? It's kind of partly cloudy out there. I don't feel so guilty for skipping it now. <laughs> I like it when it's cloudy and I'm not doing nothing. Uh, even if those two guys are out there, forget them. Um, uh, what else did I want to share with you guys? Um, oh, you know, like, like I said, I was so busy today. The sun was giving me nothing but pr problems. Look at, look at, check out my. Uh, I was trying to animate this. This. Uh, you know what? I was pointing my my scope at this um, that sunspot. You can see. Let me show you that sunspot again. That was the final still image I got with it. But um, I, I pointed it at for a while, and look what happened. A solar flare appeared. But the problem is, look at all the flickering around it. This was driving me crazy. I must have tried to reprocess this 50 times. I, I couldn't get rid of that flicker, and I think the problem was the data is just bad. As so many frames were blurry in it, and... I, and you know what? The sun is still too low. I was shooting over a neighbor's house. and Maybe it was just heat going off the roof. I don't know. It was just, uh, I tried. I tried what I could. And it, it doesn't look as good as my still frame because I had to go light on the processing. The deeper I went, it, ex it exposed more issues from frame to frame. So anyway, it, it didn't work out. I, I did post this temporarily on Astro Bin. Then I was so disappointed, I just deleted it. But the only people who will see it are you guys. So, in this video. Okay, I'm babbling. So, I'm rambling. I'll see you guys later. It's starting to get late. Thanks for watching. I'll see you, see you folks later.